Hey, Leroy Moore here. I'm in Berkeley, California. I'm a writer, poet, activist. I'm in my apartment. I'm wearing a black, gray sweater with um, gray hair, salt and pepper hair, beard, and a little mustache. Yes, and I'm Tron Herman. Uh, I'm sitting in my bed mm. office <laughs> in New York City. Um, I am a dark skinned black man with also uh, facial hair. Um, and I'm wearing a gray ish beanie and a black tee. Um, hi, Leroy. Hello. How are you doing today? Oh, man, I, I woke up, so I'm doing good. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. How about you? I, I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. You're catching me on the uh, like after I just celebrated my 30th birthday. Oh, so birthday. Yes. thank you, thank you. So I'm I'm um, already kind of processing like a new decade, and I think culturally and historically, we're all contending with a kind of a step into a new uh, strata new sphere um so i'm just really feeling that um the the newness <laughs> there's newness all around it feels like um i've we have so many mutual friends we have so many kind of like yeah. interlocutors we have so many things that uh we seem to just kind of run parallel you obviously are a forerunner of such of a lot. Um, so I just wanted to take a step back and be like, uh, where are you in the progress of your many movements and organizations? What's happening in your, uh, in your activist work and your artistic work? Like, what are you, what's being activated right now? Like today or during the pandemic, what have you been working on? Wow, that's a, that's a huge question. I know. Sorry. Oh, man. Oh, man, I've been working on many things like I always do. Um, but the one thing that's really, um, that's really I'm looking forward to is that Crip Hop, Crip Hop Nation with a K, um, is finally um, having a firm foundation under, under it because... Um, for what, 15 years we've been doing this on an SSI budget, you know, out of homes and stuff. But now, um, because of Keith Jones, the co founder of the Wild, um, Keith Jones does this um, organization for the last 20 years called, um, called, um, so, so, so touching experience in which um, this year he filed for an LLC. So, Crip Hop is under the LLC. And uh, we're doing really um, big stuff. We're trying to come out with the Crip Hop Institute. Mm. We're trying to like buy a building and having an equip hop institute in that building with visual artwork and a music studio, um, an international room, um, all, 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 sorts, all sorts of stuff. So that's, that's, that's a big project. And also, wow. Um, they're putting out my book called For You, Black, Dis Black Disabled Young Men. So mm. it's an anthology of um, Black Disabled uh, Men. So that's coming out soon. And yeah, we're just trying to do it in this um, pan pandemic. And another big thing is that um, I might be um, doing a PhD mm. in LA. So 
I know Dang. about that in March. Wow. What will you be studying? Uh, or what will be the focus for the PhD? Well, uh, it's only under the Department of Anthropology. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, I'm going to bring my work into it, you know, yeah. uh, black yeah. civil issues. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's that's so real because I think where you've been taking your your writings, kind of, you've you're kind of like that Zora Neale Hurston, you know, mining the mining the not like the the backgrounds, you know, um, of of folks in our communities, um, but giving it an artistic bend, getting it giving it its kind of widened perspective, if you will. Um, certainly, you know, in reading Black Disabled Ancestors, uh, I was really struck with uh, or by just like the things I didn't know, and your and also your uh, your blog. Um, just detailing blues and uh, and disabled blues musicians and disabled musicians in general, like there are so many things. Uh, and I think what you say in in some ways is like um, it's so important. It's so important that we know our history. Mm. Um, and so the anthropology PhD sounds perfect. Um, and I definitely hope you get it. Kind of thinking about like how you make um, how you kind of bridge things together. Um, what art are you making uh, right now? Like just explicitly, and you, and you said the um, you had the for you uh, like say well ma- male anthology. But is there any more? Um, what's what's going to happen to the uh, the graphic novel or the comics or any other uh, pieces? Yeah, there's so many pieces. It's like the graphic novel, I'm working on um, issue two. So issue one has been out for almost two years now. Mm-hmm. So I'm working on issue two, and the storyline is um, is um, uh, Roxanne returns, and Roxanne is gonna take over Crip Hop and all the mm-hmm. elders like myself, Rob, or Keith, are meeting in New York, you know, just to make that happen. Mm-hmm. So that's so that's uh, that's the storyline for issue two. All right. Oh, uh, uh, it's because Roxanne is coming from the future, and she beats up with you in the past yeah. and connects and you know I just watched this movie Tenant with it's like the new Christopher yeah. Nolan film yeah. and it's about time travel and I think yeah. this is <laughs> this is like that you know she's the pet she's the future coming back and all these parts are really exciting um what do you think about using yourself like do, do you are you comfortable using yourself as uh as a character, as as a um, as a part of your of the stories that you tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like to keep myself in the background, mm-hmm. you know, because it, it's you know, queer pop is about a we situation. So mm-hmm. yeah, I like to keep myself in the background and highlight other people, like you know, Roxanne. Um, um, also, in issue two, is that where we we come together um, under the um, the passing of Rob Denoy's Temple, and Rob Denoy's Temple um, was um, a co-founder in Quipot that really happened. He passed away last year. So in, in issue number two, we all come together. We all attend, you know, uh, the Noise Temple's funeral. We were coming outside of that and um, just, you know, talking about the future of Quip Hop. The, 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 the elders look around and like, okay, we're getting older, you know. 
Yeah. Right, right. Could pass on the baton. And, yeah. Mm. Mm. So I guess in the sense um, you just said, like you like to stay in the in the background. So how do you build your worlds and how do you build your characters? Where do they where do they come from in terms of yeah? Well, for for the black Zilla ancestors, but that that book is a story. Because the ancestors woke me up every day. Mm. I mean, every day. <laughs> like at two, three, four in the morning, and they just write, write, write. And it, it, it's, you know, I told, I told this story um, on another broadcast, but um, when, when the book was done, the ancestors left. I was like, well, no, no, don't leave. I want to I wanna, I wanna talk more, you know? <laughs> so, I, 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 had a con- I had a question about that. Like, what, what was that? What was that? You, you, you talk about that in terms of the ancestors leaving. Um, so, I, you know, what, what will keep them around then? Or what, like, what's the lifespan of an ancestor, really? What's the lifespan of an ancestor? Like, how do they? How do we know that they will rest in peace? How do we know that they will leave us, or that it's okay that they leave us? You know, is there anything, any more revelations about um, why your ancestors have left <laughs> since the, the 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 you finished that book? I think I think they they came to me. They they knew that their story wasn't fully told. Mm-hmm. So when, once once I put it down, it's like okay, my story is told. I can I can yeah. hear, I can rest a little a little bit easier now because my story is told. But you know, I I feel them every day. But you know, doing that book, I was like in conversation with them. You know, mm-hmm. so that that was a, a different stage of being with the ancestors. Because, you know, mm-hmm. we, we feel our ancestors every day. But, you know, being in conversation with them in my dreams and telling me to wake up and write, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Porgy in your ear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I guess the in a larger question, how do you choose your stories then? Oh, that's a good question. I think I think they, they just come to me like um, mm. the graphic novel, you know, Roxanne character came to me. New York, um, because I'm from New York, you know, and because I, I was I was at that time when hip hop was on the corner, you know. So I, mm-hmm. I had, you know, a visual picture of it, you know, because I was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. And what about uh, what was your impetus for uh, for Black disabled ancestors? Was it the, was it the the them coming to you, or was there something? Else, um, there, there is something caution. else. There is something else because I, I, I always thought that the story wasn't complete. You know, the story mm-hmm, wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because you know, being black and disabled, especially back at that time, you know, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't have a microphone. You didn't have a, you know, computer to write it. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I think that, that was the emphasis of, of writing it, you know, because I wanted mm-hmm. to, you know, to, um, it, it's weird because, you know, I don't, I don't want to say that I, I'm the only one that knows the full story, you know, but, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to complete it the, the way that, you know, I knew best. In the way that they told me, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and of course, yeah. you search on them, you know. Mm.
so I guess, um, I mean, how do you feel now about your connection with the characters, the real people that you have put into works? Like what's your relationship with them after you finish a work or uh, yeah, after you finish the work, how, how do those characters feel um, to you? I thought I finished the work, really those characters feel like um, they want to go on and teach other, other people. You know, I mean, all of my books, and I'm not just doing this to pat myself on the back, but I think all my books could be in schools, could be a part of mm -hmm. curriculum, you know, I mean, Black Disabled Ancestors, Black Disabled Art History 101, I mean, those books, you know, could, could be teaching tools, especially for, you know, youth in special education, because you know that most of the youth in special education are black, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they are black boys, so mm -hmm. they need to look, they need to have that, I think, you know, because mm -hmm. I, was, yeah. I, was, I was looking at, I was looking for that when I was younger, you know. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. Me too. I think my first, I think I compartmentalized, you know, the representation I saw or felt because, you know, I, I would see um, who are my people really like. Uh, it wasn't even like really like Denzel or like, you know, my Samuel Jackson. It really wasn't them. It was like, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, it was more like, it was a lot of Disney Channel folk. It was like a lot of like, it was like Raven Simone. It was um, the guy who played Jet Jackson. You know, these. it was like Kyla Pratt. It was like these folks that were really creative and were doing something. And then when I turned 16, I saw My Left Foot and that uh, with Danny Day-Lewis. And that was the first time I'd seen explicit male, uh, like, cerebral palsy, um, uh, family life. It was, uh, and, and he was an artist, Christy Brown. So that really turned it, turned me out. Cause I'm like, oh my gosh, here's fine. I get to see something, a visit just, he's Irish obviously, and it wasn't the full picture, but I got to see at least a bit more, you know? And then that made me think, or at least be more comfortable with like, oh yeah, I could write or I could do stuff or I could, keep going so you're so right that it it you know we have to we just need it I mean regardless of whether or not we grasp to it if it's there it's a, it's a resource you know and so that's um, yeah I know I knew when, okay. when I, I the one thing that really changed my life when I was growing up is mm -hmm. when I saw Porgy and Bess on TV mm -hmm. and I, I shot it you know, it's, it's, I shouted at my mom, I was like, mom, mom, I'm on TV, I'm on TV. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, no, that's Porgy. And I was like, mom, I'm Porgy, you know? <laughs> you walk like me, I was like, oh, my God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, with that, I guess, so when we're talking about resources or what gets placed into schools, what gets placed into children's hands, what gets placed into what, what, what institutions choose to, to gather and to take. I wonder what your um, conversation with rigor, you know, scholarship and um, these kinds of, um, you know, necessary components to making stuff, like how do you deal with the, um, the need to be expert or a kind of have a kind of language and then the content, you know, whether or not that be hip hop or that be um, uh, ancestral black folks. Like there's this, um, I wonder, is there a schism between like what the, what the, what the institutions want and what you're saying, or how do you, how do you bridge? And then this is a big question. How do you bridge the language of, the institution with what you're doing. 
Oh my God. That's a big question. That's the question that I always get like salt in an open wound. I need, mm. I've tried so many years to get black cultural institutions to take up black disability history, culture, art, whatever. And I think that's why Crip Hop wants to start the Crip Hop Institute. Because right, right now at 54 years old, I'm tired of asking people to do stuff. <laughs> you know? mm. I'm so over that, you know. So mm. that's why that's why I want the Crip Hop Institute. So you know, we can have our own place with our you know, black disabled history and you know, hip hop and books and stuff. So those institu- those black cultural institutions can come to Crip Hop Institute and learn mm. what they what they've been saying no to. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it, it one thing is about building my own our our, our own um, vision because we we have to. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's that's one thing about Crip Hop. When it began, I, I loved hip hop, but I, I didn't see myself. So I was like, okay, let's, you know, mm-hmm. start this, you know, so. Mm-hmm. And how does, how does Crip Hop expand from a, um, like a representation or expression model to like an institutional model? How do you see that happening? Oh, God. That's a good question. I think I think I I see it. Oh, you know, I, I see it happening with with the projects that that we do. Mm. You know, mm. for the last mm. um, six years, queer pop has been collecting um, visual art. Um, Disabled hip hop, disabled artists, you know, from Brazil. Yeah. To, we we have one coming from Uganda next week. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. that in um, you know, we 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 started on an international stage. You know, it's like really right. good. Crip Hop got more love outside of the U.S. when we started. Mm. Our first article was in Italy. <laughs> you know, mm. I mean, we traveled to to the U.K. for Data Fest for two years, mm-hmm. the largest disability arts festival, in, I think, in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, you know, we are... Our international friends, you know, our roots are deep because we had to go international because we we were getting no love here in the U.S. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think I I really love that because um, one, yeah, the fatigue of asking others to support or to build for you is tiring and and unnecessary sometimes um so to build your own is always in my vision preferred because then you can really control the or at least you can have you can be center in the intentions you know um of what happens was that was that similar to how sins invalid was was kind of spurred on or yeah yeah yeah. black disability collective me and Patty Burn was at this <laughs> Flamingo, Flamingo dance um, event in Berkeley. And we looked at each other like, oh my God, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And we said, you know, it'd be excellent if we had that in the, in the you know, people of color, disability, you know, queer community. 
And from there, we, we, we saw each other's films. So that I, I had a film back then called um, The Green Axe by Todd Herman. And Perry Byrne had a film. So we saw that and we was like, oh my God. And you know, it just started since right there. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I guess, so when you, um, what does it mean or feel like yeah, what does it feel like when you start? What is it? What does collective action, collective work feel like for you? Like when you're uh, in a collective or in a a group uh, of artists, but working for for justice. What is that? What's that? What's that environment like? Oh my God! It feels it feels it feels like it can finally take off my mask mm. to finally be myself, you know? mm. And knowing that people have my back, you know? They're knowing that we are creating something that, that, that needs to be there, that it's not there yet. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like bigger than us, but at the same time, you know that if we don't support each other, <laughs> it won't get done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is what is your role in um what would you say is your role today in the disability black rights movement? How are you contributing to the many kinds of activities happening? Oh, uh, today, in the Disability Black Arts Movement, it's really, for me, um, continuing to, to recognize that we've always been here, mm -hmm. you know, um, to, uh, to try to keep it rooted in the black community, um, to really, really, really um, educate the black community. I think I, I know it's gonna be controversial uh, to mm. say it, but I think I'm just over um, educating the white community, like this whole community. Because mm -hmm. I see I see the black community is so far behind mm. when, when we talk about disability. Yeah. You know, I mean yeah. you know, yeah. we're in the disability justice in black community still into um you know um, the medical model of disability trying to erase it, you know. And yeah. it's not because of us, it's because the roots that we came from in the U.S. is slavery, you know, that taught us that this way should be hush-hush, you know, so we, we had to, you know, strip that off and, mm -hmm. you know. That disability is like a, is like a primary uh, antithesis to production and productivity. You know, like if you are un if you are disabled, you are unproductive, and therefore you yeah. must be carted away, yeah. incarcerated, in prison, confined, maimed, killed, all of that. Yeah, 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 and, that, and that, that's and that's why you know I do these books, you know, to, to put in their faces right now, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, black disabilities, because uh, you know, from here coming to um to um El Eleanor, you know, bumpers, mm -hmm. you know, those people, you know, our our history, our you know, and and that's right. so much for us to to learn from. You know? 
Yeah. And you've been, you've been, you've been consistent because I remember um, a meme, I think it was on your Instagram where, you know, cause everyone was posting Kamala Harris in the shadow of, uh, I think, uh, Ruby Bridges. And <laughs> this is the same image. And she, her, her new shadow was of a cop. Uh, in this picture, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, he really, he really went in." Or they, you know, like they, they, Leroy doesn't doesn't mince because it's like I think definitely growing up in California, like I knew the harsh, you know, I also knew the harsh realities of uh, just justice, prosecutorial, you know. Uh, procedures but we as a community kind of forgot that like our own people were kind of doing the same thing that we're still protesting you know and it was just like for me it was a it was a real it was really nice to see that um we won't you won't sacrifice the community just for politics or for you know because even at the even at the onset of like a a historic moment we can't forget that we also have a due diligence within our community, right? Like we still have to come, we still have to show up in the right way to liberate us, no matter no matter who, you know, the idea of liberation is not just like, oh, it's gonna be blue, oh, it's gonna be from the red side, or it's gonna be from white people. It has to be consistent folk. That's what just revealed to me. Um, so I just want to say that was a real moment. And I was like, oh, shoot. And then even with that Thanksgiving, I went home to my uh, family and um, I remember talking to my aunt who was like, you know, we had a real conversation about like, what's the legacy of black folks and like people in power and how there actually has to be like a little bit more of a, of a focus or a lens on what kind of black people we're talking about and what they're doing. Because it's like, it's not just enough to be a woke person if you will like you know it's like you got to kind of show a little bit you got to come kind of come and I think through education and through really understanding our histories we'll know why we what what we do matters um so I just yeah it was like damn that was a moment that was definitely a moment when I saw that picture um (laughs) and I guess like you know because who who were your you said you know of course hip-hop uh what else were your influences growing up um either uh artists activists um movements what was what was generating your ideas when you were growing up and giving you giving you your uh your perspectives i guess oh my god i I tell the story a lot Mm. Going down to, um, to my father's basement, my parents' mm. basement, and going to my father's record collection. My father, yes, yes. Father had a huge record collection, you know. Yeah. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. pulling out records and seeing all these black men with disabilities, I was like, "What the hell is this?" You know. <laughs> All the blues artists, you know, Robert Winters that walked on crutches and Walter Jackson. And I was like, wow. So that 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 was my foundation, you know. Because I, I, I used to take them to school <laughs> and she was like, oh no, we can't we we can't study that. I was like, why is this mm. Right. So, you know, that, that really gave me a foundation. It, it's like, I, because I saw myself. It's like going back to court. You know, once you see yourself, then you say, okay, okay, I'm out there. And, you know, some adults just don't know. <laughs> so I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, rattle my cage. You know, so that is that gave me a foundation. Um, um, you know, just being black, being disabled, you know, you suddenly <laughs> back in the 70s and 80s, you spend a lot of time alone, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So 
at that time I was writing, you know, so like no wonder I'm writing today. Mm -hmm. so that, that, they gave me, you know, a foundation too. I used to go to the library a lot, you know, it was before computers. <laughs> You know, so I, I've always wanted, I've always been looking for my history from the beginning, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I always look for black disability history. I think that, that's why, um, you know, most of my stuff, you know, would, would be good in the Quip Hop Institute because I've been collecting stuff for years, you know. Yeah. So yeah, because mm. I I just I just I need I need to I need to see myself at, at an early age. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask a question for you? Oh sure. I mean, I love your dance. Oh my like, God, I love it. I just, I just, I see, I see, I see. Um, I just, I, I just have visions of you doing like a dance, you know, of our ancestors, you know, going back to the, the dozens, you know, the story of the dozens. Mm. And yeah. having the, the whole dance right there, and, you know, on a, on, on a, on a stage that, 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 that's a ship, you know, it's, yeah. yeah, I just, I just see that, it's like, wow, you know. I mean, I, what I mean, engaging with your work is, has been like, giving me some, a lot of different visions and a lot of different scenarios of like, is possible um, and what I'd like to touch on. Like I was invited to do this um, mini commission on Beethoven and um, that was really wild to learn that he was a Moor, you know? And like he, and so that colors everything, even the notes, even like, you know, what was his composition, you know, all that. So. It's really curious the under undertold stories. Just I'm so into that. I'm so into that. Um, just like, we have like about nine, like ten minutes left from our uh, our time. I wanted to get into man a little bit of like more of the uh, of the controversy, right? So I think we <laughs> talked about um, we talked about like uh, maybe for, you know fatigue of 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 white education or or, or educating educating whites or only being educating. Um, so what is what is your what are your impressions of of, of wokeism and um, and maybe woke wokeism outside of the black and disabled communities? Wokeism. Hmm. I see it as uh -huh. I don't know, like some harsh I see it as a, as a social network kind of movement, you know? Mm. I don't see it outside of, of that. You know? Ooh. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, when, 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 when I'm in like me, I, I don't see that, you know? Right. When I click on Facebook or Twitter, I see it all the time, you know? Mm. Mm. So you think it doesn't transfer to real life <laughs> at all, or? Uh, no, I really don't. And I, I, I just, I'm not in those spaces. <laughs> yeah, but mm -hmm. I, I really, I really don't. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm still being profiled by black cops, you know? And so mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I, don't, I don't see it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, you know, I um, see like here in Oakland, there's a couple of black male spaces, men's spaces, but they don't include disability. You know, so mm -hmm. 
So yeah, I don't I don't feel the mm. the, the wokeness at all. Mm. Mm. I remember I was on a panel, uh, <laughs> and the, one of the ladies, black woman, she said, I was talking about how you know what are our procedures for accessibility in this like this thing we're working on and she's and we're talking about the the word at risk and all these other things and you know she said that you have to we have to fix race before we can start disability or we can get to disability and i was like oh (laughs) and i found that so disheartening um my question is like you know what does that look like working together? Like, how does that, because yes, black spaces usually are very fearful of disability. And I think it goes back to slavery, like you said, or back to the productivity, all of that. Like, you're not productive, but you're not a man. You know, back you, when you were, I watched um, a piece of yours, man, uh, it was a man to man talk, uh, yeah. a, a, a poem. And that struck me because it's just like, yeah masculinity is 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 especially black masculinity is so entrenched in productivity in our prowess in our body like bbc got a big one like all of that stuff like it's it's so pervasive um so i'm wondering like how do you combine how do you combine um how do you combine what's the word how do you combine struggles how do you combine that liberation work Oh, I just, I, uh, I realized that that our memories are short, mm. Mm-hmm, like very short. It's just, it's just amazing how you can have hip hop studies and all these hip hop conferences but no one, no one's talking about the blues, and no one's talking about the the um, the blind blues man that started the whole blues industry. You know, it's like there, there's no connection. It's like, you know, and that's and that's what I bring up. I was like, how do you start from 1970, and you're not gonna mm. go back to the blues? I mean, it it, it doesn't mm. make sense. You know, so when, when I bring that up, they say, oh, yeah. It's like, how can you call yourself a black star and you're not <laughs> going to research all, all history? Mm. So, you mm. know, I try to bring it up constantly, uh, write about it, you know, I do lectures about it. And, mm. you know, I, at the end of the day, I... I, I've done my part, you know, I, I can't, I can't, you can't force a donkey to, to the water, you know, <laughs> if they, if they want to, yeah, they step in, mm-hmm. you know, die mm-hmm. of that drinking, and that's, that's, that's their loss, you know, but, right, right, yeah, I mean, for me, it's just constantly putting it out, out there, you know, mm-hmm. Just you know, then some you know, yeah. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking to the wind. You know, mm. you know. Sometimes I feel like you know, people just don't want to hear it because it goes against the main thing. You know, it goes against their their grant proposal. You know, it goes against you know their their security. You know, but. Mm. You know, yeah. I I, I just I just realized, I just realized like a, a couple of years ago that it's not me, it's them. You know, I can mm. I can do, I can put it out there if they don't like it. You know, mm. that that's on them. You know, sometimes <laughs> you know people mm. say like, you you're too harsh. You know. So that, I think that's why I write stories and poetry. I just 
songs and stuff that they can get through without, you know, being like a a heavy hammer. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you call like some of your successes, some of your milestones, um, some of some of your wins in this whole game? Oh god, this whole game. Oh my god. That's uh some of my wins, you know, still being alive. Hey. You being a black bell, still being alive. I'm 53 <laughs> years old. Um, <laughs> um, you know, like you know, I got I I got this email a couple nights ago from a, a nine year old, mm. nine year old black boy, and you know, he said, "Anyway, thank you for your books." You know, so that that's a milestone for me. You know? mm. I mean, yeah. No, no, no money, no grant, no anything could place that. You know. Yeah. Oof. Oof. Chills. <sighs> but you know, on, on on the work side, I, I'm really really excited about this upcoming. Um, working with um, Keith Jones and mm-hmm. you know we have so much in the works for the future. You know we Quip Hot just did the theme song for the Par- Paralympics, and that's huge. That's humongous. You know, for the which the Paralympics. Yeah, for the Paralympics. Yeah. Wow, congrats. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's that huge. That is so huge. It's huge. Wow. That, and I'm so, um, I'm so thankful that, you know, Quip Hop has chapters. I think mean, I was just doing an mm. interview with a Quip Hop artist in Uganda, you know, and they're kicking butt. And, just to see that Quip Hop is, you know, has people all over just doing their work, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Ah. Oh. Uh, um, man. I think as like a closing question, this we I alluded to this on our, on our last when we were, you were, I was moderating the panel that you were on um, for Extreme Kids and Crew. But I do want to just touch on this one more time. Like, what is liberation to you? And maybe how how do we get there? And, or how do we co-work to get there? Wow, that's, that's a book. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You can write it. <laughs> uh, What's liberation to me? Not not being under capitalism. God, not, whoa, yeah, not being under capitalism. <laughs> Shoot. And you know, having 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 um having avenues where people can feel empower, empowered. You know, you know, like like your work. You know, seeing mm. a black disabled man dancing. I mean, that's humongous. You know, mm. you know, walking into a bookstore and seeing my books right there. Mm. You know, it's humongous because in the eighties, yeah, that that wasn't there. You know, yeah. You know, so those things. Um, you know, of course, having our own um, organizations, our own collective, you know, creating so much new art, writing, curriculum. Um, you know, keep on, 
kicking the butt of politicians to do what they should be doing, you know? Mm. Yeah. And, and, you know, having, having the option to, to, to come back home. Because I, I don't mm. think black disabled that people can come home now because the black community is so far behind on disability. Yeah, it's, it, it's, 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 it's an open wound to come home. <laughs> you know, mm. there's, there's that's the deadline. There's um, there's. It's not a surprise that a lot of black disabled people work in white institutions, disabled institutions, because in the black community, there's there's no place where you can um, place your abilities or place your artistic work or place your political work because we we got so ableist. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I look forward to, you know, a liberation where black people can come back home. Yeah. And really, really, wow. um, really stand firm on their on, on their ideas, on their disability ID, on their black ID on the queer ID in, in the black community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. And I think that you are setting, you've already set foundations for that mm. to occur. I hope so. I, I'm a recipient of it just in the sense that, yeah, it's it's lovely. Um, man, thank you so much. That was, that was beautiful and all I had. I think there's a lot there. Um, I'm thinking of this as like a as a primer to the idea of uh, of contemporary elders and, and ancestors. You know, like we we don't have to wait till people are dead <laughs> and gone. I think that wisdom is is circular, and um, and that we should be we should be utilizing it at every single juncture. So. Um, yeah, thank you so much because you really did just affirm a lot of things I, was, I have been thinking and it's just nice to kind of just co-talk and, and oh, be in space definitely. to do that. Yeah. 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 Awesome. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And you got, you got, you got to come back to the Bay, you know, after all. Oh. This time. You're like, I, yes. I, I miss, I miss, I miss your, um, events. So yeah, and I have I I have not yet, but that's that's just definitely one of my big dreams. I want to experience the Bay as an adult disabled black man. I want to feel what I because I did Kaiser three times a week, you know, uh, PT, OT. I did you know public education all that stuff as a kid so when I came here to New York it really was like to 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 brandish my own self now yeah. what this coming home that you express is so intriguing to me and I want to know what that looks like so I might have to do an extended extended bay moment for yes sure. please, please. <laughs> yes awesome right. thanks Noni thanks Claudia um, yeah, that's all we you. have for today.